Where I live, there's only a few months of the year that you can actually go outside and prime your miniatures by spraying them. Often it is either too cold or too humid. When your climate does not cooperate with your hobby, there are only a couple of good options left to you. You can either go out and buy yourself an expensive airbrush set, or you can buy yourself some brush on primer. That is what we're going to focus on today. How to use brush on primer. Special thanks goes out to the sponsor of today's video. The Army Painter sent me a collection of their products to test out and to review. This brush on primer is a part of that. If you have not heard of the Army Painter, they make quality paints at very affordable prices. My name is Jacob from MustContainMinis.com. I do reviews and showcases of miniatures and miniature related products. Now let's get into it. Rather than starting with best practices, I figured I would outline my adventure of using this primer for my very first time. I learned by doing. I did some things right and I did some things wrong, but I am happy with the end product. I am hoping that you will learn with me as I discuss the Army Painter's Brush on Primer. For those new to the hobby, we use primer on our miniatures to give the paint something to stick to. If you paint your miniatures without primer, there's a good chance that your hard work will flake or scratch off the surface of your model. Depending on the material of your miniatures, you may want to wash them before you prime them. I have links to posts about washing your miniatures in the description below. Now let's test out this brush on primer. To start, I make myself a paint palette. You don't want to use a wet palette with this. That would cause issues. You want a dry one. To make one, I simply cut a clamshell in half from a miniatures pack that I previously bought. Palette created. I then shake my paint on a vortex mixer. These things are great and really save my hands from having to mix the paint hard. I toss an army painter mixing ball in there too. Now if you don't have a vortex mixer, that's okay, it just requires a little more shaking. This stuff comes out nice and smooth. It's a little bit thick compared to other paints, but it is primer. Now this is the first time that I use the Army Painter's brush on primer, so you're going to learn with me, but I ironed everything out by the end of the project. To start, I used a regimental paintbrush and painted it just like I would base coat a miniature. I put it on a little thick, but primers tend to shrink a bit, so I wasn't too worried. I also intended to work in the primers so they wouldn't be as thick when I finished. Near the end, I would wipe down the extra thick primer and make sure to get rid of any air bubbles that I could see on the miniature. I also put primer on the bases of the miniatures. There, I'm done this miniature and ready to wait for the paint to dry. Let's put her aside and work on the next mini. Again, I use a regimental brush on this figure. Later, I learned that I should have been using a larger brush. This is a learning process for me and I hope that you can learn from my mistakes as I figure out the best way to use brush on primer. When I switched brushes, I made a few more discoveries. When you're priming a model, try dabbing the primer onto it or brush it in the direction of the details. Also, don't get your brush very wet with water while you do it. You can see here that I started getting a lot of air bubbles when I was brushing in a different direction from the details and using a wet brush. Once I dried off the brush a bit, I went back over the area and smoothed it out and got rid of the air bubbles. I went over this model multiple times and brushed it thinner. At the end, it looks great and it's ready to dry. The next miniature I painted even faster with the same technique. The paint went on much better with a bigger brush than I did with a smaller one. I did find though that I could not get into all of the recesses of the miniature though. To deal with that, I would go back later with a smaller brush. I also went back over the parts where I had applied the primer a little too thick and smoothed that out with the larger brush. It worked out very well. Again, I was careful to make sure that I covered the entire miniature with a thin layer of primer and made sure to smooth out any air bubbles I saw. These iron horse or hover cycle miniatures were tougher to use the larger brush on than the past few miniatures that I primed. That said, I was still able to work a thin layer of primer across the whole miniature. After the miniatures dried, here's how they looked. I inspected each one looking for the parts where I missed priming them. Anywhere that I saw missing primer or what didn't look to be fully coated, I brushed on a little more primer. 
I've heard different advice from the internet. Some painters say that if the primer is a little streaky, or there are a few patches where it looks a little translucent or a little splotchy, that is okay. I'm not 100% sure on that, and I don't want to be testing that, so I just made sure that everything was covered in primer. Once the brush on primer is dry, you can start to paint your miniatures. Here are a few samples of this group of miniatures after I completely painted them. I really like their look. These miniatures come from the new two-player starter set for Wild West Exodus. There will be a link to an unboxing video of that in the description below. There will also be some affiliate links that earn must contain minis a small commission if you use them. Doing so really helps this channel out. Any links where must contain minis may earn a commission I have labeled as affiliate in the description. Highland Media edited this video. For any fellow YouTubers looking for a freelance video editor, his contact details are also in the description below. Finally, a big thank you goes out to the Army Painter for sponsoring this video with product. Until next time, happy gaming everyone.